So Nassau County GOP Chairman Joe Mondello, I appreciate your time. How are you? My pleasure, Liz. Pleasure to be here with you. So um, going on behind us actually right now is the uh, count for the um, for the U.S. Senate seat, yes. the uh, the battle for the line, Roe B. And you nominated... The one against Schumer. Right, for Schumer, right, right the full term. You right. nominated George Moragos. He's the right. Nassau County Comptroller. He just got there. <laughs> He did, Liz. There's no doubt about it. He just got there, but he is a, he's a very bright, articulate um, uh, individual who really wants to make a difference, and he feels that the difference can be made in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's indicated to, to me and many times that it, although he's only been five months in the position of controller in Nassau County, uh, this thing is basically calling to him. He thinks this is, is uh, the opportunity that he needs to, to move on. Um, frankly, um, I agreed to support him. Um, to a certain degree, at, to a certain time, uh, which I'll leave, uh, you know, uh, alone right now, except to just say to you that I've agreed to, take, to support him for a certain time and, and see how it goes. He's going to have to uh, get support from a lot of different counties around the state. If he's able to do that, well, then I'm, I'm with a leader that believes in giving him a chance. Now, that's interesting, though, because it must be difficult for you. You actually had a very good year last year. Yeah. You you had you had a, a come-from-behind victory with um, a Mangano, with Ed Mangano, ousted Tom Swazi. He was a Democratic star from the, in the county executive. He took control of the county legislature. Then you took the controller's seat with, with uh, Moragos. I mean, you're talking about a comeback for the Nassau County GOP after a, a time when nobody thought that the GOP would come back in, in Long Island. Well, Liz, I'm proud to say you're right, and uh, I'm not going to deny it, and I'm not going to, uh, you know, kick the ground and say, uh, like the board says, oh, shucks. I'm going <laughs> to tell you that we worked hard last year. We saw it. We identified the issues well. We saw that there was growing unhappiness with the people, with the Democratic Party and their leadership concerning money, uh, their spending and their taxes and they just the way they were handling taxation is terrible the way they're spending money like drunken sailors and the people hated it we recognize it we got on the issue we we talked about it we made a firm purpose to to uh, to change this thing and we won yeah but it must be difficult then to see what's going on now at the state level because there's so much division in the party and you actually stepped down from the state chairmanship to go back to well you simultaneously held the local Nassau okay. County and Correct. then and you also were holding the state chairmanship Correct. Stepped down from the state chairmanship, went back to NASA, brought NASA, the G NASA GOP back, and now this. And now this, which is not a good thing, Liz. I, I uh, have to agree that I think it's a little chaotic, and it's something uh, that needs real repair here on the, the state level. Um, we're, we're much behind right now, as you probably well know, in terms of the agenda, the way things are moving, and we haven't gotten to the real fighting yet. Mm. And it's going to—I I predict this is going to be a contentious convention. So, but do you wish that you were still state chairman, or do you feel like you well, got out when the, the getting was good? I—I I, I feel I was kind of lucky to get out while while I still had my uh, my my shirt and my my coat that I could get out with. Um, this, uh, um, but but there are things that I see happening that I wish that I was there to maybe change. Mm, like and, what? Oh my God! There's the talk about uh, amending bylaws uh, to make it easier for certain people to run. Not certain people like Steve Levy. Correct. Is that what you mean? That's, that's, okay, okay. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> okay. and, and that's not something I really. Uh, whether it was Steve Levy, though, I want you to understand, Liz, or anybody else. Because you're a Rick Lazio supporter, we should I'm, say. I am definitely a Rick Lazio right. supporter. But if the shoe were on the other foot, I'm going to tell you, I'd feel the same way principally. You know, you've got to be a county chairman to realize what it takes. The money it costs to increase primaries and things like this, the money, the time, the effort, terrible thing. I, it was me, you know, primaries to me are, you know, uh, abhorrent. What can I tell you? But people complained, actually. I mean, the rank and file complained about your stewardship, uh, stewardship of the party. Mm -hmm. In 2008, you know, the last toehold in state government was the state senate. Correct. That was lost. Yeah. And then you ended up getting... Um, they they wanted you well, to go probably would be fair but now i mean ed cox isn't having much better luck is this party ungovernable is that the problem is it no, de is I, it dead I in new york i think it's very governable i just i just think it's going to take the right person to come in here and lead and and it just uh, you know I, I i to defend myself a little bit i will say i had three of the worst years that anybody ever inherited i came in and it was when george pataki left office mm. everybody had gone all the democrats came in and i was left with a bankrupt 
party, and the only thing on the table recourse was to sell our building in Albany. I didn't want to do that. I worked hard raising money. We did that. I, I brought it back somewhat. I'm very proud of what I did for those three years in some areas. But you know, you can't do it all. You can't be like the guy that you know is building the house all by himself and puts mm. every brick in it, and you, know, you didn't get a lot of help from a lot of the. Uh, you know, the people in the party. Well, it sounds to me that you don't think that Ed Cox has done a great job in terms of leadership. No, he, I don't. So who should be leader and should he be removed at this point? I mean, it's difficult to remove him. He, he really it would have to step well, down if there was a find, no confidence We'd have confidence to find vote. somebody to take his place before we... Before and we, who uh, might that be? Well, I don't... I, I can't to speculate about that now. I can't. I, I need somebody who's going to be independent, somebody who's going to go his own way. And would you vote yes on a no confidence yes. vote? Mm, I'm going to reserve decision on that. Depends on who we're going to trade them for. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get ahead of yourself. You, know? you can't replace somebody with nobody. Do you actually really believe that this could be the big Republican year that everybody's talking about? And can the Republicans beat Andrew Cuomo? Or would it be better, as some Republicans say, to focus, to just sort of be like, you know what, Governor, eh, let's focus on the bottom of the ticket where we actually might be able to make Liz, some it difference. Be, it could be a great Republican year and not win the governorship. I mean, you know, Andrew Cuomo is quite, a, uh, is quite an adversary. But there are, you know, if we take the controller seat, if we, uh, if we, if we were to be able to take the AG seat or something like that, I mean, you know, that would be quite big for the Republican Party right now since we hold none of the state seats. None. Yeah. And you don't control the Senate? No, we don't control the Senate. But that, I could, that's been coming on for a while. And all in fairness, Liz, you know, it's been coming on oh, sure, for years. Sure. Got a lot of people uh, who are wanting to retire and leave. Yep. And all of these things came to fruition at once. And then we were faced with a situation where we didn't have a good bullpen. And, uh, but you still have that situation, to be fair. I mean, to really, be fair, the, we the, still the bench have is very situation shallow. Was, it, it shall, although we've, we've been able to pick up some people, uh, that, um, but it's been done in a, in a way that uh, I, would, I don't totally approve of because it's been done very quickly and in, in a defensive manner rather than taking time and watching people grow. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, I think you know, I do. People should come through the chairs. There used to be a way that people would do their, and you got a good chance to look at them as they grow. And then when they were ready for prime time, mm. you were able to, you know, pick them off. But now with some of these people, there, would not, there was no bullpen for them. So who's the uh, gubernatorial nominee going to be? That takes place tomorrow. We'll have your best bet, and then I'll let you go. Well, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be Rick Lazio, and I think it's going to be 53, 53 to 50. Six. Fifty-three, fifty-six percent for Rick Lazio. Yeah, I think that's Does Steve Levy get on the ballot? Yes. 20, Steve with 20, Levy gets I think on the if he gets twenty-five percent, I think we're going to try to do an amendment change. I'm going to oppose it. Okay. Well, we're going to I'm catch back up I'm with you, Chairman. That, but the understanding is that's what they're going to try to do. We're going to catch back up with you and see if you were right. I'll be with you. Joe Mondello, Chairman of Nassau County GMOP. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Liz. Thanks Pleasure so much. To be here.